The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to the second edition of our transfer talk. Uh, it's been a really busy Euro 2020 and Rovers have been really quiet in the transfer market. So we had every intention of doing these weekly or fortnightly, but the news has been quite slow. So it is the 28th of June now when I'm recording this, a few weeks after the first one that we did. So we'll follow the same format as we've done before. We'll cover the ins, the outs, the contracts and any other news which is of interest at this point. Uh, so if we do start with the ins, um, really quiet on the transfer front for Rovers, mainly due to the embargo surrounding the club. So uh, if everyone remembers, clubs did have that extended deadline to get the accounts for last year published with Companies House. And Rovers did take up the option to take until the 30th of June to do that. Uh, we are reassured that they've now been submitted with no issue, but until the point that they are published, we do officially remain within an embargo. So perhaps this is making our transfer business pretty slow at this moment in time. Um, but today's news, uh, really interesting. Uh, Venkis have made a share allotment of £29.5 million, this time via the club's accounts and not the parent company, uh, the, the parent Venkis company. So the general view is that that should impact FFP fairly positively. Uh, and it is the first time they've done that since 2015. So seems to be that Venkis are still putting money in. Maybe this will help with contracts and some transfer business beyond the 1st of July. So let's see. Uh, but in terms of ins and outs, we are therefore really restricted to rumours at this stage. So nothing concrete that I can give you on this update. So we'll stick to the rumours for now. Um, it mainly involves younger players, actually. So the first is... Uh, Blackburn-born Leighton Clarkson, who um, he is a youngster currently in the Liverpool Academy. He has been linked with the club. Obviously, we've seen uh, joy with Harvey Elliott last season. Maybe Liverpool would be up for that type of move. Uh, if he is a Rovers fan, obviously, uh, maybe Leighton Clarkson will be pushing for that one as well. So maybe that's one to watch. Uh, another is Dan Ballard, who is a defender within the Arsenal Academy. Um, he's been linked with Rovers very tentatively over the internet and social media. Uh, other clubs are linked with him as well, um, so we will see. But really, you know, with the success that we have had with recent Premier League loans, if we think of players like Adara Bayo, Harrison Reed, Harvey Elliott last season, Taylor Harwood, Bellis, players like that, absolutely no surprise that clubs may be willing to part with their youngsters to Rovers. And obviously, we're not expecting to, expecting to spend largely this summer either. So really no surprise to see us dip into that loan market again. Uh, but sadly, I did mention him, Taylor Harwood Bellis is a player who will not be coming to Rovers next season. Uh, he has joined Anderlecht on a season-long loan uh, just on Sunday, the 27th of June. Um, he obviously joins up with Vincent Company, who is manager uh, of Anderlecht now. But um, one thing that has come out of the kind of Man City end, though, the rumours are that Man City uh, are really pleased with Rovers and we've made a positive impression on them in terms of their youngsters. So maybe further loans from Manchester City are ones to watch. But um, yeah, we really are restricted to rumours at this moment in time. Nothing really concrete, cir uh, concrete circulating. So let's see what happens after the 1st of July. Uh, so we'll move to outs from the club. Um, Today, goalkeeper Joe Hilton, uh, he has completed a season-long loan move to Hamilton Academicals. Uh, that was held up a little bit by that embargo that I spoke about earlier, but he has completed that move today. Uh, another rumour on the out front, um, if we'd said this last month, you would have been like, what the hell? But uh, obviously, all the talk is about Ben Brereton, Brereton at the moment after his extraordinary couple of weeks with Chile in the Copper America. Uh, no surprise to see that, you know, little rumours here and there are starting to surface on social media. Uh, so Leeds is a club apparently linked. Marcelo Bielsa used to man uh, manage um, Real Sociedad. Uh, the Chile boss used to manage there. So these little rumours are just starting to gem uh, generate. And Ben Brereton, you know, let's see what happens in the summer with him if he carries on having a good Copper America. But um, obviously, amongst the Rovers fans, Brereton mania is well and truly 
uh, cooking on all cylinders at the moment. So um, let's see how Chile do and let's see what happens with Brereton when he comes back. Um, the other player who does continue to be linked away, and obviously Rovers fans are expecting this one to happen at some point over the summer, is Adam Armstrong. Um, he does continue to be linked away. Uh, the leading clubs are suggested to be Southampton, West Ham, Norwich and Brighton. But at this moment in time, there are no offers for Adam Armstrong. And indeed, he was pictured today returning for Rovers training uh, at Brockle. So um, Adam Armstrong at this moment in time remains a Blackburn Rovers player and there is no concrete interest in him just yet. Uh, and then the other little rumours on the out front uh, is Tyler McGloyer, um, Motherwell and Morecambe apparently taking an interest in him. Uh, we'll see what happens with that one, particularly if Rovers are waiting to do their own business that might be one that happens later on in the window, so we will see. Um, then if we just move on to players that were released by Rovers, if you remember that retained list that we covered on the last transfer talk video that we did, uh, Elliot Bennett was one of the players who Rovers uh, did, not, or Rovers did actually offer Bennett a contract, um, sorry, and he was free to talk to other clubs. He has taken that option to go and join another club. Uh, and he joined Shrewsbury Town, uh, and that was confirmed about 10 days ago. And just a little plug to the podcast that we managed to do with Benno last Thursday evening, uh, a really good live podcast that we did with Elliot Bennett, where he reflects on his time at Rovers. So go and check that one out on our Rovers social media accounts. And another plug that I'll give you, we've got another one uh, right in the offing, following Elliot Bennett. We've got Danny Graham next week as well with Tom Schofield. Not next week, first of... Um, Thursday, the 1st of July, sorry, <laughs> getting my weeks and days mixed up. But Danny Graham, 1st of July with Tom Schofield. Look out for that one on our social medias. So that's Elliot Bennett. Uh, the second release player who has found another club is Amari Bell. He has gone to Luton Town and will officially join them on the 1st of July. Uh, that was confirmed over the weekend, but Luton are doing a lot of early business at the moment. He is the sixth or seventh player that Luton have signed and they are getting in early. So Amari Bell joining what looks to be an exciting Luton side next season. So maybe some people's dark horses, the, uh, the Hatters next season. And then the other transfer, which was confirmed of our release players, uh, Joe Grayson last week joined Barrow in League Two. So good luck to to Elliot Bennett, to Amari Bell, to Joe Grayson. Um, good luck to those three with their new clubs. We will wait and see if any of our other released players end up finding a club. Uh, at this moment in time, the only one that appears to be still up in the air is Harry Chapman. Uh, still no news on whether he's staying with Rovers or joining another club. So let's see what happens after the 1st of July and see where Harry Chapman does end up. But he does still appear to be leaving the club. Uh, so if we move on to contracts then, this is also another big one that Rovers are going to have to try and tie up over the summer. And we got the really good news at the start of June that Joe Rankin Costello signed a new contract until June 2024 at the beginning of this month. So that's brilliant news for Rovers. Um, fully expect him to be a really important player for us over the next few years. And just fingers crossed he can stay injury free. Uh, and really impact our side in a positive way next season. Really does need that run of games. So you get the sense it's going to be a big season for JRC next season. Uh, and then another player who signed a new contract is Louis Annesley, the Gibraltar international. He signed a new contract until June 2023. Uh, and just going back one step, Joe Hilton, who we talked about going to Hamilton, he also signed a new contract as well before that loan move. So three new contracts for our youngsters um, being tied up there. The three that we're still desperately trying to get sorted. Uh, Joe Rothwell and Ryan Ayambe. We are still really trying hard on those two in particular, trying to get them tied down to be part of the club next season, of course. Still no news. So let's see what happens. We've obviously taken up the option on those two so that they are with us regardless next season. Hopefully we can convince those two to stay on improved terms. Uh, and then the third one that we're obviously trying for is Adam Armstrong. And um, there is the suggestion there that we are still trying to tie him down to a contract. So let's see what happens with that. Maybe Armstrong will be convinced to stay if he's the highest earner, et cetera, et cetera. We've obviously shifted a lot of wages off the bill now with the likes of Charlie Mulgrew, Corey Evans, Elliot Bennett all leaving the club. Is there a little bit of wiggle room there for Adam Armstrong to sign a new and improved contract? Because we are led to believe he did take a pay cut to join Rovers. So I would suggest he's probably looking for something which is over and above what he was earning previous to joining Rovers. So maybe that one will be a difficult one for us to do. 
And then just to cover other news really quickly away from transfers, uh, love this. Thomas Kaminsky, he's been called up to the Belgium Euro 2020 squad. So Simon Mignolet, their second choice goalkeeper, has got an injury. He's had to withdraw from their squad. So Thomas Kaminsky was on standby. He can now join up with Belgium for their quarterfinal tie uh, against Italy, of course. So good luck to Thomas Kaminsky. Um, he will join up with them tomorrow um, once the COVID protocols and everything have been sorted. And I believe Belgium's quarterfinal is this Friday. So uh, let's see if Thomas Kaminsky gets any match action. But great for a Rovers player to make it to Euro 2020, of course. Uh, obviously, last Thursday, our fixtures were announced. Um, Ollie Walker Peel did a live show. If you've not seen that, go and check that out. But it is Swansea at home, rather poetically, on the opening day of the season for us. You know, that was obviously our last game that we could all go to. Uh, it's the first game that we can go to post this pandemic. So really fitting that it's Swansea again as our first home game of the season. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the players return to training today. So go and check out the Rovers website and other things and you'll see the pictures of the squad all returning. So things are starting to motor forward now towards pre-season. Um, so that's good to see. Uh, and then just a final plug for all of the content that's going to be coming your way over the next few days and weeks. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have got the podcast with Danny Graham uh, coming up this Thursday with Tom Schofield from Rovers Chat. So look out for that. That's going to be a live show. And I'm sure Danny Graham will be full value on that podcast and live show. Uh, we have got our big quiz on the 27th of July. Go and check out the Rovers Analytics uh, Twitter page and, of course, the Rovers Chat Twitter page. We are just showing you all the different prizes and things that you can expect from that quiz over the next few weeks. We're really going to be pushing that. Obviously, that is all in aid of Sporting Minds, who are our chosen charity partner this season. So loads of prizes on offer. A Joe Rothwell signed shirt, Elliot Bennett signed boots, you know, loads of stuff on there. Go and check that out. Um, today, we launched a breakfast show with Ollie Walker Peel. He is our man down under in Australia. So um, what is 8.30 a.m. on Mondays for us? I believe is about 5.30, 6.30 p.m. for Ollie down in Australia. But, you know, if you want to listen to something or watch something on your school run or on your commute to work or whatever you're doing, 8.30 a.m. on Mondays, you can check out Ollie's new show uh, where he'll cover all things Rovers. So I think that is it. Um, hopefully these transfer rumours start to accelerate more than what they've done over this last month or so. But I guess for now, we will carry on enjoying Euro 2020. And we can obviously look forward to returning to Ewood Park in August for Swansea at home. Until now, see you all later and we will see you all soon. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.